Hi guys, welcome back. Tick tock. I wouldn't be a good waifu. What? Um, no. No, no, no. Not that one. Back in 2007, Intel adopted a production model where Tick described manufacturing process shrink and TOC meant a new microarchitecture. Put simply, a new CPU is released and then followed with a refinement. Rinse and repeat. Their third gen processors, called Ivy Bridge, represented a tick and introduced a smaller 22 nanometer manufacturing process. Lower power consumption and increase in performance are to be expected, along with some minor improvements such as support for low voltage DDR3 memory and major updates to the integrated HD4000 graphics. Intel's 3770K was released in April of 2012 for around 330 USD. As usual, there are four hyper-threaded cores clocked at 3.5 GHz and out of the box it will boost up to 3.9 GHz. The fresh 22 nanometer process is reflected in a lower TDP of just 77 watts, down from 95 of the second generation. Good. Ivy Bridge also brings support for PCIe Gen 3 and unofficially works with super fast DDR3 memories with speeds of up to 2800 MHz. The test setup remains unchanged. I'm still using my trusty Maximus 4 Extreme with 16 gigs of Corsair's Vengeance Pro memory. There's the 360mm all-in-one liquid cooler and the RTX 3080 hopefully generating CPU bottleneck. Let's talk about the overclock. I had no trouble hitting 5 GHz with both 2700K and 3970X, so naturally that was my aim for the 3770K. Reading up through some old threads over at Acer's Rock Forums suggested this won't be easy or even possible at all. One bad change Intel made with Virgin was to no longer solder the IHS to CPU die and instead use a regular thermal paste. This resulted in higher core temperatures and severely limited the overclocking potential. On the other hand, deleading and use of liquid metal became really popular. I can't say I didn't try for 5 GHz, but despite numerous attempts and pouring 1.52 volts through vCore, I could not get past Windows logon screen. Stepping down to 4.9 GHz at 1.45 volts did let me in Windows and about halfway through Cinebench run but I always ended up with a blue screen of death. And all along, temps were actually fine. Few moments and about 20 restarts later, I finally settled on 4.8 GHz at 1.42 volts on the V-Core, which, luckily for me, runs stable. Let's look at the power consumption next. Remember, this graph looks at total system power consumption. Idle at stock speed pulled just 84 watts jumping to 143 watts under full CPU load. That's some decent power saving right there. When overclocked at 4.8 GHz, full CPU load pulled 168 watts, which was mighty impressive when compared to the 2700K, which admittedly runs a 5 GHz overclock, but that's still nearly 100 watt difference. We are off to a great start here. Let's look at synthetic benchmarks next. Running at stock speed, 3770K pushed R23's single thread score of 772, jumping to 954 points when overclocked. And yes, I'd really love to see Ivy Bridge to break past 1000 points and push a bigger score. However, let's remind ourselves that the second generation 2700K is running 200 MHz higher clock speed and it consumes nearly 100 watts more for what is essentially the same performance. 7 zip benchmark ranks stock 3770K slightly above 30 GIPS and when overclocked we are pretty much matching 2nd gen, yet falling short of some AMD's FX processors. Stock performance in Blender takes 11 minutes and 24 seconds to complete the car demo render, neck and neck with a FX 9590. Overclocking cuts down the render time by nearly 3 minutes or 14.5%. Lastly, handbrake. And here we're using a fast 1080p 30 preset on a 10GB 4K video file. Stock 3770K takes the lead and beats the overclocked 2700K by a whole second. Nice. Overclock cuts down less than a minute, which is not as impressive, but hey, 
I'll take it. First impressions? Well, it's hardly faster than Sandy Bridge, but those power savings are nothing to be sniffed at. Both Sandy Bridge and Sandy Bridge E delivered fantastic gaming performance, so I'm really looking forward to seeing how much better Ivy Bridge really is. Our first stop, F1 2018 with ultra high settings at Japan Circuit. Stock 3770K delivered 150 FPS on average and 1% lows at 101. When overclocked to 4.8 GHz, average FPS went up by 13% to 171, ever so slightly edging last gen's 2700K. Nice. It's quite impressive to see that the stock performance of 3770K in Dirt Rally is only slightly slower than what a fully overclocked 6-core Big Daddy 990X delivered when I tested it. Overclocking pushed the average FPS by nearly 50% and once again, very slightly above the 2700K. I think I've spotted a theme here. CPU cores saw a good utilization in Deus Ex Mankind Divided at around 70%. The indicated power usage of around 55 watts is about 30 less than what the 2700K used when I tested it, and despite the use of thermal paste between the CPU die and IHS, temps remained under control and below 70C. Overclocking pushed the average FPS to 128, once again only ever so slightly faster than the 2700K. Forza Horizon 4 using Ultra Preset next. Stock 3770K delivered 122 FPS on average, with 1% lows at 88. Overclocking brings a nice 17% uplift to 143 and nearly matches the 3970X. Shadow of the Tomb Raider sees some proper CPU utilization and also above 80% usage of the RTX 3080. Wow! At stock speed, it's pretty much matching the overclocked first gen 990X. But when overclocked, I saw a very generous 27% uplift to average FPS. This is impressive indeed. Not much changes in Rainbow Six Siege and 3770K continues to deliver steady performance that's on par with the 2700K. Overclocking provided a nice 16% uplift to average FPS at 246 and 1% lows at 158. Far Cry 6 with Ultra Preset next, and it seems as this game is not very keen on CPU or GPU utilization. Stock 3770K delivered 66 FPS on average and 1% lows at under 50. Overclocking pushed the average FPS by 17%, which seems to be about the average across most of the games that we tested. The last game we tested is of course Cyberpunk 2077. Using high settings with no upscaling, Stock 3770K squeezed 76 FPS on average falling short of the 990X by a small margin. At 4.8 GHz, I saw a nice 25% uplift to average FPS at 96 and 1% lows of 54, once again, not running away by much from the 2700K. I think it's time to wrap up. There you have it guys. So what do we think of the Ivy Bridge and the 3770K? Well, those of you expecting groundbreaking performance uplift, it's not happening. But instead, where the third gen really shines is the power efficiency. What I gathered from today's testing is that we virtually get the same performance as with second gen, but save a cool one third of the power. And that is significant, whether you like it or not. I would imagine back in the day, for those still using Core True Duo or first gen systems, Ivy Bridge must have been a tempting choice. On the other hand, those with Sandy Bridge probably saw no reason to upgrade. Have you ever owned a 3rd gen Intel chip? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, if you do enjoy this content, hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel so that you don't miss any uploads. I hope to see you all in the next one. <laughs>